Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Wednesday, July 10th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, activist Adam Kokesh is raided and arrested by stormtrooper police. Then it's spy versus spy as Obama orders the government to snitch on each other. And John Corzine will face no criminal charges over MF Global. All that and more coming up on the InfoWars Nightly News. But in America, they have a hunger to literally put us in jail. Well, in light of our top story today, I want to start out with a quote from Martin Luther King. He said, an individual who breaks a law that conscience tells him is unjust and who willingly accepts the penalty of imprisonment in order to arouse the conscience of the community over its injustice is in reality expressing the highest respect for the law. That's Martin Luther King. What Adam Kokesh did was to respect the law, something that the District of Columbia is not respecting. They're not respecting the supreme law of the land, the Constitution. And they're not respecting the Supreme Court, which ruled in 2008 in the Heller versus D.C. case that their unconstitutional law about carrying loaded weapons in Washington, D.C. was invalid and unconstitutional. But what we're seeing now is a new twist on unconstitutional, unlawful enforcement of laws. We also see now a, a new twist of a jurisdictional move. Here we've got a situation where Adam Kokesh exercises civil disobedience in a Washington park, and they come after him in an area outside of that jurisdiction using the federal police. So the federal police are enforcing an unconstitutional D.C. law that has been struck down by the Supreme Court. In our article on InfoWars, Adam Kokesh, raided by stormtrooper cops, says numerous police vehicles, including light armored vehicle and two low-flying helicopters, barricaded Adam's street. More than 20 armored SWAT team members surrounded the house, as well as a number of detectives and plainclothes officers. Assault rifles were aimed on all members of the team as they were handcuffed without being told why they were being detained. Masked and armored police, and why they wear masks, because they're not obeying the law, and full stormtrooper gear flooded in and ransacked the residence. The team was cordoned in a front room while Adam was pulled aside for questioning, and of course he was kicked as well while he was handcuffed, we also learned. The raid was conducted by Herndon Police, as well as U.S. Parks Police, an arm of Homeland Security. And there's an image on the article there that shows uh, media trucks in place to broadcast news of the raid instantly, Kokesh's Facebook page writes, how nice of the police to tell the media beforehand that we were going to get raided. <clears throat> well, this is essentially what happened in Waco. If you remember, the media was told that the raid was going to go on. And as a matter of fact, the code word for the beginning of the Waco raid was showtime. That's why we have video of the beginning of the assault of the Waco uh, homestead there. Now, that same mainstream media dutifully reported what they were supposed to do to report the government's side of the story. Even the Washington Times, which is a conservative paper, and their story refers to it as what Adam Kokesh did, as not as civil disobedience, but as a stunt. Here's a quote from their article, activists arrested after loading shotgun in Freedom Plaza. They said, a controversial internet talk show host was arrested at his home in Herndon on Tuesday night after a videotaped July 4th stunt in which he loaded a shotgun in the district's Freedom Plaza, <clears throat> a violation of the city's gun laws. Now, the Washington Post didn't really talk so much about the gun laws. They mentioned that briefly, but they focused on his, the charges that he has a hallucinogenic mushroom in uh, conjunction with having firearms there. The Washington Post's headline is, Adam Kokesh charged with possessing hallucinogenic mushrooms. U.S. Park Police Lieutenant Pamela Smith said her agency executed a search warrant at Kokesh's home in Herndon about 7.45 p.m. Tuesday looking for a weapon. Carrying a loaded weapon, concealed or unconcealed, is against the law in the district. But he was not in the district. One roommate, Ed Yealy, said he was punched in the back of the head by an officer. They estimated 30 to 40 officers participated in the raid, said that clothes were dumped in the center of one bedroom, a mattress was pushed up against the wall. They were there for over five hours, drilling through a safe, uh, doing various things, just basically doing everything they could to find anything they could pin on Adam Kokesh. And it reminds me of what Stalin said, or one of his lieutenants, bring me the man 
and I'll find the crime. You have enough time with somebody, especially when you look at the thousands upon thousands of laws that are in this country, you can pretty much pin anything on anybody, given enough time and given access. I mean, certainly we all know that Adam has no respect for the illegal unconstitutional war on drugs, but it's not beyond comprehension that uh, they could have planted these mushrooms there. He may have had them there, he may not have had, but in five hours they can pretty much plant anything they want to there. Now, charging documents, this is also reported from the Washington Post, charging documents filed in the court Wednesday morning said that Kokesh was charged with possession of hallucinogenic mushrooms, a Schedule I narcotic, while possessing a firearm. Possession of a Schedule I or II drug is a felony in Virginia, punishable by up to 10 years in prison and a maximum of $2,500 fine. If convicted of possession of the drugs while also in possession of a firearm, he would face an additional minimum of two years in prison. Well, basically, Adam has put it here on the line, and we really appreciate his act of civil disobedience. It's very important that when the government is acting in a criminal manner, essentially the same thing that happened with Ed Snowden. Here's a person who is being vilified as a criminal, being hunted down by the U.S. government, and yet what he did was expose criminal actions by the U.S. government. He didn't send trade secrets to another country for... Uh, profit or personal gain. What he was doing was exposing criminal actions by our own government. And when the people who do the right thing, like Snowden, when people who do the right thing, like Kokesh, it's Kokesh who is obeying the law. It's Kokesh who is illustrating that the Constitution says one thing, the Supreme Court says the same thing, and the District of Columbia says something else. But I want you to think about how this is treated differently. Look at the case of the football player for the uh, New England Patriots, Her Hernandez, who was arrested. Now, they didn't kick his door down. They didn't stay there and bully people in his household for five hours. Instead, they just came in and arrested him. Also, look at the difference in the way they treated NBC's David Gregory. If you remember, as part of a newscast, he held up a firearm that was prohibited under D.C.'s gun laws. And for holding that up, he could have faced, for having possession of it, he could have faced a $1,000 fine and a year in jail. And certainly other people as part of the news crew could have been exposed to that. And yet, the Attorney General in District of Columbia said he wasn't going to press charges for them because they're their partners in the mainstream media. So it brings up the whole question of equal protection under the law and how the elites, the government, and the media are treated by a different standard than the rest of us. And as a final example, take a look at this story from InfoWars just today, that a Democratic aide brings a gun into a courthouse and receives nothing but a ticket. Security officers at a federal building in downtown Detroit found a gun in the purse of Betty Petrens, Conyers' office manager. Bringing weapons into a government building is strictly prohibited, but she received no sentence or formal punishment, only a ticket that will be stricken from her record if she demonstrates good behavior. So I guess the good behavior would just be a, being an aide for Congressman Conyers. So there's one set of rules for the elite, one set of rules for the politicians and the political class and their cohorts in the media that they alert whenever there's going to be any raids so they can get a good photo op out of it. And then there's a different standard for the rest of us. It's kind of like the ruling class versus the sheeple. And you can see that very clearly if you look at Another example, let's say John Corzine. Now, Corzine is not going to be facing criminal charges over MF Global. And this is from an article in InfoWars Today. He said, if you are a billionaire, former Goldman Sachs CEO, ex-governor, and one of Obama's biggest donors, and you steal $1.2 billion directly from the accounts of your customers, and you cover up that theft, you are not a criminal. But if you reveal the unconstitutional spying on all American citizens by the government, you are a traitor and face life imprisonment. Or, in the case of Adam Kokesh, you point out that the District of Columbia is violating the Constitution and a Supreme Court decision. I'm going to keep repeating that. Then you are a criminal, not the District of Columbia, not Police Chief Kathy Lanier. The article goes on to say, the criminal probe into whether there's wrongdoing on the part of Corzine by the Department of Justice will now be dropped due to lack of evidence. Said a, court, said a report in the New York Post, citing a person with knowledge of the matter. Now, how is this different from Bernie Madoff? Bernie Madoff, if you remember, built customers out of $10 billion, approximately. Well, Corzine, I'm sorry, $18 billion. Corzine has, according to one count, 
over 27,000 commodity customers' claims totaling over $10 billion, with more than 1,000 securities customer claims totaling $1.4 billion. So that's still being determined. But in one case, you have someone who doesn't have political connections like Corzine, a former governor and senator, and you've got somebody who is well-connected politically. One person goes to jail for stealing $18 billion. The other person speculates and loses $10 billion and absconds with billions of dollars, and nothing happens to him. That's the difference between the ruling class and the sheeple. And, of course, we have another example of this in Iowa. This story from the Daily Journal in Iowa says, Some cities with traffic cameras are giving a pass to the Iowa governor's SUV, whose plates aren't on file. If Governor Terry Branstad's state vehicle speeds through Iowa's two largest cities, the driver could enjoy a perk that tens of thousands of other motorists would envy, a break from the aggressive photo enforcement of speeding and red light violations. The SUV status in which its license plates are not included in police databases, came to light last week in records related to a high-speed pursuit in April, where state police officers had no idea whom they were following at up to 90 miles per hour. After that incident, a state agent complained to superiors that the governor's vehicle routinely speeds, putting public safety at risk, and should not be treated differently than ordinary citizens. Well, of course, this is something that has been going on for quite some time. This is just the new technological uh, version of this where the database is already pre-set up to just ignore it so that nothing ever happens instead of just throwing out the tickets or telling the police officers not to give tickets to the governor. So he's free to drive 90 miles an hour <laughs> through the lights, whatever he wants to do, and it's just a non-event because he's part of the ruling elite. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, InfoWars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at InfoWars.com. InfoWars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. 
So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to Wake Up Friends and Family. I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the new world order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team.